All right, what's going on everybody? Interpolation searches, these are an improvement over binary searches that are best used for uniformly distributed data. Basically speaking, we're going to make a guess, and I'm saying that within quotes. We're guessing where a value might be based on calculated probe results. If our probe is incorrect, our search area is narrowed, and a new probe is calculated. Basically, we're guessing where a value is going to be and return the index. So using an interpolation search, this has an average runtime complexity of big O of log log n. And in a worst case scenario, where our values within our collection increase exponentially, this can have a runtime complexity of big O of n. So to demonstrate this, let's create an array of integers. Int array, we'll name this array, equals, and assign this some numbers all uniformly distributed. Let's say the numbers one through nine all in order. This would be, I would say, a best case scenario. Then let's find an index. Int index equals, and we will invoke an interpolation search function. So interpolation search. We will pass in our array and a value we would like to search for. Let's search for the number maybe eight. Okay, then let's declare this function. Private static int interpolation search there are two parameters, an array of integers and our value we are searching for. I'm going to rename this parameter as value so it's more descriptive. The first thing that we're going to do is calculate the upper bound and the lower bound of our searchable area. So int high will be the higher bound of our searchable area, and this will be our array's length minus one. And the lower bound is, well, the first index, int low, and I will set this equal to zero. Using a while loop, we will continue probing. The condition within our while loop is while our value is greater than or equal to our array at index of low, the lower bound, and our value is less than or equal to our array at index of higher bound. And our sizable search area is going to shrink after each iteration. So while our value is within the new searchable area, keep on probing, keep on searching. I'm going to add another condition too. Low is less than or equal to high. After each iteration, our searchable area is going to shrink. Once our searchable area is zero elements, well, we can't search anymore, so we might as well exit. Now here's the formula to calculate where our value is probably going to be, and our guess will be referred to as our probe. Int probe equals, and here's the formula, high minus low times our value minus array at index of low, our lower bound, divided by array at index of high minus array at index of low. I'm just going to add low to the front of this, and I'm just going to make this a little bit more readable for us. Here's the formula to calculate where our value is likely going to be. It's a little complex to read this. A few of the contributing factors are the size of our current searchable area, high minus low. So to begin with, we have nine elements times the value we're searching for minus the value at the lower bound, so eight minus one, divided by the value at the higher bound minus the array at the lower bound. Then at the end, we're just tacking on whatever our lower bound currently is. So it's a complex formula. All you have to do is just copy this. So during each iteration, I'm going to display our probe. This is going to be essentially our guess. And let's check to see if our probe is equal to our value. So using an if statement, let's check to see if array at index of probe is equal to our value that we're searching for. If it is, let's return our probe. This is the correct index. Else, if our guess, our probe, is incorrect, we'll need to narrow down our search area. So using an else if statement, let's check to see if array at index of probe is less than our value. If that's the case, we will need to set the new lower bound. Low equals probe plus one. Else high equals probe minus one. Now here's the deal with these statements. We're currently searching for the number eight. If we guess our probe is at, let's say five, 
and our value is greater than this probe, we can disregard this portion of the searchable area. So we're moving the new lower limit, the new lower bound, to just after where our probe was, 6. So this is the new searchable area, and then we'll calculate a new probe based on this data. If we're looking for, let's say, 2, and our probe says it's likely here at 5, well then, since 2 is less than our probe, we can disregard all of this data, and this would be our new searchable area. We would move the higher bound of our data down to just below our probe. So that's kind of the idea. So at the end, if we do not find our value, let's return negative 1 as a sentinel value. So back within our main function, let's check to see if the value returned does not equal negative 1. Using if else statements, if index does not equal negative 1, then let's print a message. System.out.println element found at index plus index else element not found. Okay, so this should work. Let's run it. So we are searching for 8. So this formula calculated that this value is likely at probe 7, index 7. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this was the first iteration of our while loop. We were able to find our value 8 on the first iteration. So let's find a different value. How about 1? Element found at index 0. That's the first element. So interpolation searches work very well with uniformly distributed data. These numbers are all increasing by 1. So this is a little too easy for our interpolation search. It's guessing the likely index on the first try, so let's create a more difficult data set. So with our new data set, let's say that we will start with 1 and then double the number of the previous element. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, and 1024. And let's search for the number, what about 256? Let's see how many probes this is going to take. All right, so here's the results. We iterated our while loop five times. We had five different guesses. After the first guess, this was not correct. So we narrowed down our search area, then we probed again. This still wasn't the correct answer, so we probed again, and again, and again, until we got the right value. So that's an interpolation search. It's an improvement over a binary search that is best used for uniformly distributed data. It guesses where a value might be based on a calculated probe result. If the probe is incorrect, the search area is narrowed, and a new probe is calculated. The interpolation search has an average runtime complexity of big O of log log n, and a worst case runtime complexity of big O of n. This would be if our values increase exponentially. So yeah, that is the interpolation search. If you would like a copy of this code, I'll post this to the comment section down below. And well, yeah, that is the interpolation search in computer science.